Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. They'll be able to do that very shortly. We'll be announcing a date, but it'll be very short. And frankly, it'll be uh, at a time that will be earlier than the deadline that we imposed the end of April. So we think that some of the governors will be in really good shape to open up even sooner than that. We'll speak to them, but we're all set. We're counting on the governors to do a great job. And the governors are going to do the job. Yesterday, I spoke to Governor Doug Ducey, uh, and we were chatting, and he said, look, it, this is my decision, and we're going to talk with the municipalities here in Arizona, the you know, the mayors, but the reality is, is it's, it's going to be uniformity. It's going to be my decision. We're going to open up everything in a slow manner, but we're not going to the, – the president's going to have very little influence on that. And I get that. The question I get asked every single day is when life is going to go back to normal. When's it going to go back to normal? When, when, when's it going to – it's going to be a while. It is going to be a long while. For some people, for me – Outside of not being able to go see a movie or playing some of my soccer leagues, my life's kind of the same because I lead a very, uh, I've got my, you know, the kids and, and the family and, and, and very kind of rural areas. So we do our thing and, and I, I don't, not a lot has changed until you go outside and then you see that there's nobody on the roads <laughs> and you're like, what the hell is this about? But for everybody else, when is life going to go back to normal? It's going to take a while. It is going to be a solid year or so, maybe longer, before we're back in that point where we remember pre-coronavirus, pre-six weeks ago. But it does show you how fast things can change. That's the question, though, I get every single day is when are things going to open up again? When are things going to get back? It's a state-by-state thing. California is going to be much different than, say, Iowa, Nebraska. Some states, not a lot's changed. There's still seven states out there that have no real orders in place. And then there's some that have some orders, and then there's some that have a lot of other orders in place. It's a state-by-state basis. They know when it's to open, and we don't want to put pressure on anybody. I'm not going to put any pressure on any governor to open. I'm not going to say to Governor Cuomo you got to open within seven days. I want him to take his time, do it right, and then open New York. I'm not putting any pressure on the governors. Yeah. And that's good. New York is going to take a long time to dig out of this. It is. They were hit the hardest. They're continuing to pay the biggest price. California, massive state, largest state we have as far as population. Really? They've done a good job, but then the question is, how long has this thing actually been in California? How many people have had this? And they've built up a certain amount of herd immunity, even with all of the social distancing. It's You you look and you think to yourself, it just feels like something different happened there. Washington State was hit hard early. They've done a good job. Texas, looking to do the best they possibly can to rejoin in the way that they feel they need to rejoin as fast as they possibly can. Every state is going to approach it in a much different way. But it will happen. But it isn't going to be the same thing overnight. And I think that's the thing people are starting to realize. It doesn't mean tomorrow the light switch analogy that everybody uses, the the snap of the fingers that things go back to normal. That's not the way it's going to happen. It is going to happen in a very gradual way over a period of probably six weeks to six months for some states, where you'll see that they'll start to allow people to do a little bit more. Groups will get a little bit bigger. They'll allow restaurants to open up, but instead of having 100 seats, they may have 50 seats. And little things like that will happen over time. But normal overnight isn't going to happen. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter Feel free to tweet at me. This is Dr. Scott Gottlieb talking about the reopening side of things. So I think what we're going to see is a gradual reopening starting in May and into June. And I think it's going to be very gradual. Um, Probably sometime in mid-May, we're going to start opening aspects of the economy, bringing back people to work very slowly in a very staggered fashion. And that's going to roll out over the course of a couple of months. Now, there are states that have been relatively unhit by this virus, where you see very few cases or a small number of cases. Rural states where people naturally social distance. Yeah. 
And that's a big thing. And that's one of the things when you look at, uh, you know, for all the people out there who hate suburbia, right? You know, oh, you long for the big city. Well, suburbia has kept you alive. Having to travel from point A to point Z and you're like, ah, for work, that's kind of kept you alive in the sense of you haven't had the huge kind of spikes because you've built out instead of up. New York on top of each other. Los Angeles, not so much. Phoenix, not so much. Dallas, not so much. Houston, hmm. When you build out instead of up, there's a natural kind of thing where you already social distance. For me, I wake up in the morning very early. I hit the road. I come into work, even though there's another morning show that's working down the way. I see nobody until probably 10 or 11 in the morning. I won't see anybody. I go work out by myself. That's a normal day for me anyways. But I've lived in big cities. Let me tell you something. When I lived in London, it was weird. We were on top of each other. You take the train to the tube. You're in taxis. You're in elevators all day. It's a much different thing. So that's one of the things that that helps. But at the end of the day, every single one of these governors are going to make the best choice for them. Trump saying, hey, I'm giving you guys some all clear to start opening up and doing things. Go for it. That's okay. But at the end of the day, it's going to be your governor doing the right thing for you. This is why you leave decisions to local officials, to governors, because there, there is a different experience with this virus all across the country. And different states have made different decisions about what they have restricted. And so they can make different decisions about what they start bringing back slowly. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen. And that's fine. We're already in a situation where the pandemic's caused enough of a nightmare for us fiscally, destroyed our economy, destroyed the global economy. This is just isn't an us thing. This is a global thing. So let's do it smart so we only have to do it once. What's the old saying? Measure once, cut twice, measure twice, cut once. Let's be smart about the way that we do this. Yesterday, something interesting. Again, I don't get much into Trump's Whatever those things are, because you don't even know what it is day to day when he comes out. It, 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 you, you never really know. But he put a stop to who? That's the World Health Organization funding. Today, I'm instructing my administration to halt funding of the World Health Organization while a review is conducted to assess the World Health Organization's role in severely mismanaging and covering up the spread of the corona virus was he right yeah i think to a certain extent he was i mean who really did as bad as we can look at trump and and we could say you've done some stuff here where you've mismanaged right we we can be honest about that for you've done some stuff i've liked you shut down you know the the travel to china you've done certain things that i've absolutely liked you've shown that there's certain things that you have wanted to do and have done that have done well and you've also at times been antagonistic and i think you played it off especially at the beginning as if it was no big deal this is just some sort of flu and i think you mismanaged some of that in saying all of that the who screwed this thing up from the beginning the world health organization really did and i wrote uh dr uh joseph chambers who we've had on the show on several occasions i said yeah, you know, it's only like, I think it's close to like $700 million over two years. We do like two-year deals with them. So, and he said, look, it's not really a big deal. It isn't. Uh, we've kind of jacked this as much as well, but they are in bed with China, and they've allowed China to get away with a lot of things, like a lot of people and countries and companies that have. They turn their other way to China because they like the marketplace because it's big and it's got it's flush with cash. And on the other side of things, they also like the cheap labor. And that's something I think we can learn from this. As I was talking yesterday to somebody who loves Trump, lives for Trump. 
He said, well, we need to bring manufacturing back here. We've allowed that to happen. I said, well, we've allowed that to happen for two reasons. One, we're addicted to cheap goods. I said, you bought a 75-inch TV two weeks ago. I said, what'd you pay for it? It's like 800 bucks. I said, would you have paid 3500 for it? Because I don't know if I would have. So we love cheap goods. That's part of the problem. We've become addicted as a consumer to cheap goods. And because of that, we've allowed China, as has everybody else, to be a player in this world because we like the cheap goods that they provide for us. But the World Health Organization failed, failed miserably. And if we're going to start investigations, which get on with that later on down the line, we're being told by our people who are in the intelligence community that they lied and that China knew about this stuff for a long time. And it was probably there much longer than people realized. And they lied about it. And the World Health Organization covered some of that stuff up. No matter how bad Trump did, Boris Johnson did, and some of these other countries have, have done, that's on China. That's on the World Health Organization. 323-538-2423, at Chad Menson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Love hearing from every single one of you. My pillow. So Mike Lindell, a couple weeks ago, was out there with the president doing his thing, talking about what my pillow is doing. They're going out right now and they're basically getting rid of everything inside of their production factories, changing things over so they can produce masks and other things for hospitals and our first responders. And he's giving you the opportunity to purchase everything really cheap. Buy one, get one free. It comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee. And this is every, I mean, the, the my pillows, the towels, the 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 roll-and-go-anywhere pillows, the duvet covers, the neck and bolster pillows, the, the sheets, the whole nine yards. You get a 60-day money-back guarantee, a 10-year warranty, it's awesome. It really is. And did I tell you they're made in the USA? Just want to let you know that. Here's the other thing. You go to MyPillow.com, go to the new radio listener page, right? So you get specials there. You type in code Benson. When you check out, if you order Mike's book, your entire MyPillow order is going to ship for free. Plus, you get a $25 gift card towards your next purchase. MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. Buy one, get one free on everything. 60-day money-back guarantee, 10-year warranty. MyPillow.com. MyPillow.com. Use promo code Benson when you check out. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where independent a la carte thinkers have a seat at the table and a voice in the dialogue. I'll have what she's having. This is Chad Benson. Leadership that's guided by knowledge and experience, honesty and humility, empathy and grace. That kind of leadership doesn't just belong in our state capitals and mayor's offices. It belongs in the White House. And that's why I'm so proud to endorse Joe Biden for president of the United States. Choosing Joe to be my vice president was one of the best decisions I ever made, and he became a close friend. And I believe Joe has all the qualities we need in a president right now. Ah, Trump. Are you looking over there? He's getting endorsement after Bernie endorsed Joe. Obama. Today, Elizabeth Warren. Liawatha. Sent out her smoke signals. I endorse Joe. Yeah, it's not very nice of you to say that. I don't even know if any of these things matter. The only thing that's interesting is Bernie and the way that he's endorsed Joe and the time of which he did it compared to what he did with Hillary. That is, and I think it has something to do with, I think, why Bernie doesn't have a lot of friends out there. I think he counts Joe as at least a strong acquaintance, where I don't think he looked at Hillary that way. But so there you go. That's a, there's the political news of the day. We're still going to have a an election, guys. Just letting you guys know that the election is coming. When? Well, when it's supposed to. How does that look? That I couldn't tell you. At this point in time, I couldn't tell you what that looks like. But it is coming. 
323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Have you got your, I call it the Corona Cash yet? Well, if you get a check... In an unprecedented decision, the Treasury Department ordering that President Trump's name be printed on stimulus checks expected to be sent to some 70 million Americans in the coming days. While the president's not authorized to sign the checks, his name will appear in the memo line. No president's name has ever appeared on an IRS disbursement. The Washington Post reporting that two senior IRS officials say that adding President Trump's name will delay the first batch of paper checks. But a Treasury Department representative says the checks will go out on time and be in the mail by early next week. (laughs) Such a Trump thing to do. I'm surprised. He's like, is there any way you can put my face on these? (laughs) No, no, there's there's no way. Are you sure? (laughs) We're positive, sir. (laughs) Such a Trump thing to do. His face, no. His name, yes. No to the face, yes to the name. There you go. Very Trumpian. Very. And even if it delays it a little bit, we're good, right? And now it sucks that we're delaying it a little bit. But it's there. And that's what matters. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us. Politics covered. I know, something going on in the world. Coronavirus. People ask me. I say, hey, Chad, what's what's the shows like? I said, well, you know, I mean, we try to do – my show was always varied. I, a little bit of politics, a little bit of pop culture, a little bit of life. And it's hard when everything is corona-related. It's a very weird thing where you know the next day what you're going to be talking about as far as what's going to dominate the show. Because everything else is essentially shut down. So that's an odd thing. It is. It is very weird. That's one of the ways that my life has changed uh, is just the fact that I have to talk about something that eight weeks ago you'd heard about was starting to make some noise in other parts of the world, but you didn't realize that it was going to change everything this fast. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson really about the who, what, where, when, why, how. We we hope to learn who develops antibodies, whether people who have mild or no symptoms at all um, can develop antibodies, when they're developed, how long they last, how powerful they are. All of that is going to be critically important information to help us fight this virus moving forward. Yeah, and the antibodies, it's very interesting, some of the stuff that they're trying to do with the antibodies and the testing and whether or not that will or won't work as far as even taking some plasma from there. How long does your immunity last? That's another question that people are asking. Our working assumption is that uh, individuals who develop antibody will have protective immunity. The question is how long. That's uh, Redfield, head of the CDC. Before that was Dr. Jen Ashton talking about testing the antibodies and they're also looking at some of the treatments that maybe they can use from former patients who've survived this and taking the plasma and using that on patients that are sick an experimental plasma treatment allowing patients who've had the virus and recovered to donate their blood it's now being fast-tracked by the fda randy spires is in critical condition His daughter is begging for someone to donate plasma to save him. I hate to say it's our last hope, but it is our next hope. There are indications the treatment may work. Yeah, absolutely. Getting closer and closer as they look at some of these things. And this is the thing that's important right now. The vaccine is a year to 18 months away. In reality, 
I mean, could something happen sooner? Yes. But in reality, with testing and all of this stuff, it's probably, you know, they're, they're saying 18 months. I'm very much glass half full. I think the way that we're going, we could come up with something sooner. But look out at least 12 to 18 months before we get a vaccine. So a treatment is important because the treatment allows us to treat this like the flu, to get on with our everyday life, to know that if you did get it, you're probably going to get nowhere near a hospital that you could go see your doctor. Your doctor could say, hey, here, this is what we need to do. You're probably going to fight it off anyways because the majority of people that get it, especially if you're in decent health, you're not obese, which they're showing more and more. The obesity side of things is a major player in this, as well as other underlying health conditions. So you'll probably never get there. But if you do get to the point where you're sick and we have a treatment for it, this is what the treatment may be. And who knows what that is? This plasma treatment looks interesting. There are indications the treatment may work. Jimmy Hayden's wife dropped him off at the hospital on April 2nd. By 7 o'clock that night, he was on a ventilator. I did not expect that at all. He's been intubated since then. Last Thursday, he got the plasma treatment. And on Monday, he was able to give his wife Ashley that thumbs up. His doctors now say he might be taken off the ventilator. And that's good. Those things are good. Little things like that, because they're trying them. They're trying different ways to combat, especially people who would you would normally say, that person's healthy. That person over there, 25 years old, what's going on? Uh, Well, a lot of times what's happening with the the body, what do they call it, uh, cytotine? where your body starts producing so many white blood cells that it starts fighting itself, which causes swelling. So some doctors are saying, you know what, when this starts to happen, it, we need to reduce the inflammation rather than try to treat it in certain ways. And if we reduce the inflammation, we may never get anywhere near needing a ventilator or even needing the hospital. So they're, they're coming at it with several different things. It's probably not going to be one fix, but if we get a treatment... That will allow us to feel more comfortable in returning back to a day-to-day life that we once knew. In saying all that, there's a lot of people out there that are fine with the risk. They're fine with the, the risk of going out there and doing the things that they need to do to earn a living and to live a normal life. And I get that 110%. I am, look, we take a risk every day. You hear it all the time, but you drive to work, you're taking a risk. I think it was a USC professor who did a study that says if you're below like 40 or, or 50 and, and you're in good health, the, the risk of you dying from the coronavirus is no different than you taking a nine-mile drive every morning to and from work. And you're like, oh, I never even thought of it like that. But now we're hearing all kinds of things when it comes to this, and we want to get back to normal. And we don't really even remember what normal is for some people, especially now that we've so altered our behavior and the way that we interact with each other, especially with social distancing. And now you're talking about when we might get back to normal as far as social distancing. Some sort of social distancing measures may be needed into 2022. That from a new study in the journal Science, Harvard researchers warning that their projections indicate there would be a large resurgence of coronavirus infections if social distancing measures are lifted all at once, potentially delaying the epidemic's peak and exacerbating the load on critical care resources. The study's authors writing, intermittent distancing may be required into 2022 unless critical care capacities increase substantially or a treatment or vaccine becomes available. And that's tough. I mean, that takes a toll on you. We are a uh, a species that likes to be around one another. We are a species that likes to to interact with each other. We are a species that run in packs. And having to shrink your 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 circle of friends and be distant in such a way is it's it's kind of very weird. It's not just kind. Of, it's very very weird. In fact, there are people out there who, yeah, everybody's got a hugger, right? You hug, you hug. There's, there's always that person that hugs. And in this day and age with, you know, the Me Too, we're always scared about that. But the reality, we all have family members to do this. We all have people. I've got a couple of friends that are big huggers. And you know what? I'm cool with that because we are a 
species that like that. We need the interaction. We run in packs. That's what we do, by and large. There are some people out there with exceptions. Uh, and people are struggling with this. Yonkers resident Lori Garbin hasn't hugged her mom since the first weekend in March. The last time she was able to visit 90-year-old Mary Kirby before her Riverdale nursing home went into coronavirus lockdown. Had I known, I would have given her a much, much, much bigger hug before I left. She is a hugger. It's a way of saying for me that you mean something to me, that you matter to me. Yeah, and it's weird. Even shaking hands or giving your buddy dap or or what it's just odd. So yesterday when the the governor comes in and he, he his entourage is shrunk, by the way. So Governor Ducey comes in here to our studios to do to to do an interview. We do a monthly here on my local show here. So and normally, you know, we shake hands and with all of those people and instead it was just very sterile. And that's the way it is. You go places, it's very sterile. We're, we're, we're not smiling. We've got our heads down. It's almost a zombie-like feel. And we're losing a bit of that closeness within ourselves. And that's not a good thing because human touch and interaction is vitally important. Many of you will understand the pain she feels at not being able to hug her mom. A connection, a love, um, her smell. Researchers say there is power in human touch and hugs can heal. Endocrinologist Dr. David Freiberg wrote about it for Psychology Today. People need to be hugged. We need to be touched. Hugs affecting uh, viral infectivity, affecting mood, affecting response to stress. But because this thing is so contagious, we've really gone the other way, shaking hands and, and hugging. And it, it's 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 crazy. But he's right about that as far as the, the 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 hugging and the touching. And they did a great study in the in, in Russia that these kids that are in orphanages, they have no real interaction with human beings. Outside of getting picked up, getting their diaper changed, there's no closeness, there's no touching, there's no hugging, and they they lose that human experience, and it's very weird in how you go and you watch these kids as they've studied these kids as they become adults and how they're, because they've had no human interaction like that, where they've essentially felt no love, that They've gone off and become dangerous, and they become violent. They've become withdrawn. It's important. It is important. And when it just ends overnight, that's weird. You don't realize how much you miss it until you can't get it anymore. This too shall pass, and someday we'll hug again. I hope so. In the meantime, virtual hug. Mm -hmm. The emoji is sweet, but no substitute for the real thing. Yeah. And and how much is that going to be true? Some people will go back to hugging, but for some people, I don't think they will, at least for a while. They're going to push off. I think even if stuff was lifted tomorrow, you're still going to have a certain amount of society that views everything now, whether it's human interaction, a touch or a high five or a handshake, or even opening a door somewhere, because who touched that before? as something that's going to be very off-putting for a while. And it only took a few weeks, and, you know, I mean, now people see germs everywhere. Now people see danger everywhere. And a hug now will be dangerous for some. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me and text the program as well. Love hearing from every single one of you. Ah, Let's talk about your car, right? So you got your car. It's right there. And you're saying to yourself, self, what should I do with my car? I don't have a warranty, but I do like my car. And if something was to go wrong, I don't really want to pay a ton to get it fixed. Well, that's why you have Car Shield. Car Shield gives you 24 7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop. And the shop is the shop that you choose. And they've got all kinds of plans. So you call them up and you say, hey, you know what? My car's a little newer, I'm more worried about the sensors. And all the electronics, they got a plan for that. Maybe you call them up and say, eh, my car's a little bit older. It's like 18 years old, and 
It's got, you know, 100,000 miles or so on it, and I'm worried about the engine and the transmission. they got a plan for that. Whatever thing that you're worried about with your car, they've got a plan to protect you. Well over a million customers and counting. And guess what? 24-7 roadside assistance, rental car for free while your car's in the shop, and the shop's the shop that you choose. They get them paid directly. That's a win. That's why they have so many. Get your car shield today. Call 800-CAR-6000. Mention code Benson. Saves you 10%. Again, for as low as $99 a month, you can protect yourself from surprises and save 1000 800 car 6000 Code Benson saves you 10% or carshield.com. Carshield.com. Code Benson saves you 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. All right, Kara, relay what you just said to me. That they're closing all of the alcohol, the liquor stores. Apparently all of the liquor stores in Pennsylvania are owned by the state, and so they've decided to close all of them down, which is now causing everyone to sprint into Ohio to buy more alcohol. So the governor there wants to close the border. It's just, how do you get through a pandemic if you can't get a little drink on? I don't I mean, know. I mean, I don't drink. I've been drinking a lot more than usual. <laughs> a lot of day drinking going on. <laughs> I'll flip through TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, and I'm like, there's a lot of day drinking going on. There is. <laughs> it's people looking at each other, kids in the background. You're like, ah. No, the kids. Oh. Jack. The kids just think it's a, this is where it's summer break, because the weather is warmer, and even though they're supposed to be doing school, it is so hard to get them to do anything, because they just think, well, I mean, I haven't been in school in a month, Why? what does it matter now? And I'm like, I, I, I get it, but you have to, you have to do it. And it's so weird, because I've got my brothers who go to a different school, and I have my son, and, and, and Jack's work compared to their work it shows you just how different. Same state. Both, I mean, all three of them go to school in California, but the workload for my son is like he's doing work from nine till about two or three where he's really, the teacher's there, they're going. The other ones, they got like a book, a little a pamphlet to do. And I'm like, wow. So it's because he just wants to go out and play. And I'm like, I get it. I would want to, too. Everybody's out there bouncing on the trampoline, running around. And we have a big bounce house that's like a water slide with a cannon, a water cannon on it. And they're all running around. They're playing. And he's in there still doing work. And I'm like, Jack, it sucks. I get it. But just do your stuff. It's not much longer. You still can take breaks. But that's a tough thing for your kid. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me if you didn't think you had enough options as far as walk watching anything and everything. Yet another streaming service is opening. Say hello to Peacock. It's the streaming service from NBC Universal doing a soft launch today for Comcast, Xfinity, X One, and Flex customers. <laughs> Included are shows and movies from NBC Universal's deep content library, Think 30 Rock, Jurassic Park, with The Office and more migrating over from Netflix next year. 15,000 hours of content and new stuff, too, eventually. Peacock will be available for everyone in July, free for Comcast customers, 5 to 10 bucks a month for all others. So if you didn't have enough things to already pull from, you have a new one now. It's Peacock. But not everything is in their arsenal as of yet, there's still some stuff like The Office is one of those ones that Netflix and just like Hulu and a few of they they fight over these, even though they were owned by Universal, they wanted to keep it for another year and they paid massive amounts of dollars. Same thing with Friends, because when you when they do all these, hey, what would cause you to leave Hulu or Netflix it's usually one or two titles that have in the can like 150 to like 200 shows because it's that comfort food. And it's one of the reasons I love watching Gunsmoke is I can watch it whenever. Friends, you can watch it. I'm not a Friends fan. It's not I didn't like it. I just didn't watch it. But The Office, same thing. I'm not 
but you can turn it on and kind of just get into it. And that's that comfort food we talk about. People like that, especially in a time like this. People love that comfort food. They love to be able to watch something that they feel comfortable with that gives them mindless fun and laughter and distractions where they don't even they could do another thing they could they could be on their phone they could be scrolling through facebook or doing a little bit of work but having that on is a comforting thing and it takes them back to a certain time and that's for me it's gun smoke even though i wasn't really alive when gun smoke was at its height and uh, of its stardom i just like it because i can turn it on and it doesn't matter what episode i'm watching it's it's its own little standalone and there's comfort there. You And that's important, especially now. We'll see how Peacock does. So you've got for the horror fans, you've got Shudder, you've got Amazon Prime, you've got Netflix, you've got Disney Plus, you've got Quibi, which rolled out for mobile devices last week. Not very well either. Uh, you've got uh, Hulu. I feel like I'm missing like 40 other ones that are available out there. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. I always like to try to explain to Jack and all the kids what it would have been like in my day if we had to quarantine with, if you were lucky in Atari, no VHS tapes. Maybe if you were lucky, you had a VHS player and 13 channels. One was in Spanish. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. They'll be able to do that very shortly. We'll be announcing a date, but it'll be very short. And frankly, it'll be uh, at a time that will be earlier than the deadline that we imposed the end of April. So we think that some of the governors will be in really good shape to open up even sooner than that. We'll speak to them, but we're all set. We're counting on the governors to do a great job. We're counting on you, governors. Do a great job. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmire, who also, I believe, because of the high-profile nature of what is going on right now, has to have landed at the front of the line for the world. And I'm going to say this, right? Like, Think of, think, I, I, this is this is politics. Totally has nothing to do with the coronavirus. This is all politics right here. What you guys understand? This is a bit of politics. It's not coronavirus. This is the alert for that. Michigan's important. Probably two to three hundred thousand voters in this election may sway the entire election based on certain places. Biden's got everybody's now in his corner. Elizabeth Warren today, Bernie two days ago, yesterday, President Obama. So everybody's in his corner. Gretchen Whitmer is the governor of Michigan. She's young. She's leading a state. And she's very high profile. And right now, when you need something like a high-profile female candidate, I know she's not a person of color, not going to hold that against her, and she's in a state that he needs. I'm just saying, right? That was my political sorry stop down. Uh, When are we going to reopen, Gretchen? The government doesn't get opened up via Twitter. It gets opened up at the state level. And I'm working with my colleagues across the country to make sure that we're thoughtful, that we are also thinking regionally. We recognize that we've got to have good data. We've got to have a good plan. We've got to make sure that we avoid a second wave at all costs. That would be devastating for our economy. And so we're going to make decisions based on science and having a real strategic phase in of our economy when it's appropriate and safe to do so. The economy. 
I think people are at the point now where they've accepted, look, if I have to, uh, you know, I, I got to get out there and work and, and I've got to accept whatever happens. And I know that governors, you know, I was talking to uh, a governor yesterday, uh, Governor Ducey, and he says, you know, it's the thing that I've been saying is you have to walk a fine line if you're a leader when it comes to this stuff. You've got to obviously have empathy and care about your constituents and everybody, and you you have to. That's the, the utmost important, but not too far behind that is the financial well-being of the state and of individuals. And you have to be able to to talk to both. The problem at times with Trump is that I think people don't think he cares. I do think Trump cares. I just don't think Trump cares the way that other people want him to care, if that makes sense. It's not their kind of caring. And... No, this isn't, he's not a touchy-feely character. Other governors come across in a much better way. They have more empathy, and it shows on the outside. Doesn't mean that Trump doesn't care. I'm not here to defend Trump's actions, because I think some of them have been, you know, I think the, the way that this thing played itself out early, I don't think he took it as seriously as he possibly could. And saying all of that, You do have to walk a fine line of being able to speak to both the health side of it and the well-being of everybody and the financial side of it. And the governors will decide that because they're in the best position to do so when it comes to their states. They know their state. They know their people. They know their leaders in all the cities. And they're in the best position to do so. 323-538-2423, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. That there, kids, is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us. In saying all of that stuff about having this situation where you've got to have empathy and this, that, and the other, now we're going to do all these investigations, and here they come. What did people owe? Here's the reality of all of that. Everybody knows China was full of. Everybody does. It's not hard for us to go, well, I think maybe China wasn't telling us the truth. D- you think? You, are you serious? You think that? No, they weren't telling us the truth. Our people were telling us months and months ago that something was going on. And the more that's coming out about what they knew and what they didn't know, and I don't think we'll ever know the truth about how bad it really was and how early it actually was recognized to be an issue. And that's the jumping off point. You can look at Trump and say you didn't take it seriously enough. You can look at Trump and say you should have done this a little bit different or that a little bit different. You can also look at the Italians and look at everybody else and say, you guys, look at all this stuff. But the reality is, at the beginning of this, things went south. And everybody was lied to. The document reveals that high-level Chinese officials, including President Xi himself, likely knew of the danger and prompted provinces to start preparing while avoiding to tell its public, all in the midst of a massive travel season ahead of the Lunar New Year. During those crucial six days, Wuhan officials held a mass banquet with tens of thousands of people, and millions left the city for the holiday period. Less than 10 days later, Wuhan was under lockdown. So think about that. And that's the jumping off point. That's the jumping off point. Are we supposed to believe the Chinese? No, we're not. And we're not talking about the Chinese people because they were as duped as anybody else. But if you're going to talk about let's have investigations, because you know there's going to be one. There's investigation after investigation with everything. That's the world that we live in, especially in politics, because I think it makes them feel good and it weakens the other side. If you're lied to and the World Health Organization tweets out stuff like, oh, don't worry, there's no human to human contact, uh, you know, as far as the the transmission of this, there's an issue there. Yesterday, Trump said, you know what, we're going to take away your funding. Who? Because you knew who, and you're on China's side. 
China. So away it goes. It doesn't really. People are like, is this, is this going to hurt us? I'm like, no. Look, we, we're, we've, like a lot of things, like the UN, we fund a lot of stuff. It's about money. It's about power. It's not about whether or not, like, the, who's not going to save us from anything? So the UN's not going to save us from anything. The U.N. is useless. It's the useless nations, because they are. Hey, you've got a great idea. When it comes to uh, the humanitarian council, let's put China on it. How many Uyghurs are in prison right now in camps? Come on. So stupid. It really is. But he's saying, yeah, you know what? Pull back some of that funding. And the funding's about... It's a two-year deal. I don't know. It's like eight hundred and ninety-two million, which is not a ton of money, right? But they did fail. The WHO failed in this basic duty, yeah. and must be held accountable. It's time after all of these decades. The WHO failed to investigate credible reports from sources in Wuhan that conflicted directly with the Chinese government's official accounts. And I don't know how many people actually died in China. I don't know how many people actually had it in China. I don't think we'll ever know any of that. There's the conspiracy that it was in a lab. And look, there's some... You can look at some of the documents that are out there and some of the reports that are out there from reputable sources and intelligence agencies that they were looking into certain things in certain labs and could something have gotten out? It's always a possibility. But when you, when you hear the Chinese telling their labs and their, you know, their scientists stop trying to find out anything about this outside of how you can cure it, like not its origins and where it come from and how you do these things. It shows you a lot about what they're thinking because they know they're busted. And here's the thing. If we're going to hold their feet to the fire and the world needs to, you do it economically. And by doing it economically, you will slowly but surely start to see what happens when you take away everybody's freedom, but you give them enough freedom when it comes to worrying about the day-to-day life of a modern world, which is having a, you know, a mortgage, a car, a job. And those things start to go away because financially they start to struggle. People will turn in a much bigger way when you slowly but surely start to make that capitalistic choice of choosing to do business elsewhere. And that pressure will land on the government. And we should hold China accountable. Absolutely. We can look at our leaders here. We can look at President Trump and say, when this is over, we need to have a big conversation about how the response went. And even if if Hillary was president, the Republicans would be doing the exact same thing. But we also have to have real conversations about how China lied to the world. And people died around the world. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. Ray Cons. So many people are like, I can't believe you sell earbuds in a time like this. I'm like, how many people are working at home right now? A lot. How many people have kids that are home right now? A lot. How many people have old, nasty, janky headphones that don't really work very well? You're trying to make a conference call. You're trying to watch your your your, your Zoom or your, your meeting that you're doing, and it's not going the way you want to, and you can hear everything in the background, and it's driving you crazy. That's why you need Raycons. The E25s are their best ones yet. Six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, compact design, nice noise isolating fit. So... Whether you're on that conference call, whether you're making a business call, or better yet, whether you just want some peace and quiet, maybe you want to binge your favorite podcast like the Chad Benson Show, you can do that in such a way that you're just going to love it. Sound quality is amazing, and the price is awesome. Well under 100 bucks, and you're going to save money as well. It's simple and easy to get Raycons. Go to buyraycon.com slash Chad. Save 15% right there. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. Anymore! Ah! 
get over it. It's time to forge a new path with your very own political cartographer, Chad. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what? what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Okay, kids. Let's find out what's trending right now. The Who is still trending. What is that? World Health Organization. Trump said, no. No money for you. Bill Gates is upset about that. Bill, you can give them money, too. You can. And he says, well, it's dangerous to cut the who's money. Well, it's also partly their fault. And it's not like we're going to lose anything out on it. It's not like see, somebody said to me, so this means we're not going to get a vaccine. I'm like, are you being serious right now? What do you think the vaccine? First of all, who do you think is funding a good portion of this anyways? What do you think that money is coming from us? And if we have a vaccine, we're... What we're, we, we can't have it. We we came up with a vaccine, but the who's got it. So no, stop it. Silliness, silliness, silliness. Candace Owens is trending. Apparently, she was stopped by the popo at Whole Foods. What? Because she wasn't wearing a face mask in D.C. Is that what you have to do, Carrie? Do you have to wear a face mask there? Is that mandatory? Yep, uh, in D.C. and some of the other counties in Maryland, you have to wear a face mask at the grocery store. I was unaware. Yep. Well, how about that? We're going to talk about civil liberties and some of this craziness. Head on over to the world of Twitter. Let's talk about that. Healthcare workers in five words. Awesome. Right? Selfless. Pretty good. Two words right there. Courage. They got a lot of courage. Very much a lot of courage. Just steady and there. And that's something big. Saying that word there for a healthcare worker is big because they're there. And they're taking it head on every day. What else is going on? The blame game, because that's what's happening right now. Portfolio day. It's like, is that a business portfolio or is that a, no, it's another kind of portfolio. Chad, I don't even know what kind of portfolio you're talking about. Just some of the stuff that's going on in the world. Drew Barrymore as well. And the all-in challenge, apparently. There's an all-in challenge. I don't know quite what that is. But Tom Brady is challenging the NFL as well as the commissioner, Roger Goodell, once again. Brady is joining the hundreds of celebrities and sports figures around the world in the all-in challenge, offering up a once-in-a-lifetime experience for fans to raise $100 million. So you throw stuff out there, like maybe you want to play catch with Tom Brady, run some routes. Maybe you want to play golf with Peyton Manning. So you bid into it to have an experience with one of these athletes. That is very cool. That is very, very cool. And if you've got the money... And you want to do something like that, I'm all in. I'm all in the challenge. Ha! <laughs> See that? Look at that. I, I, I wouldn't even think about it. It came. I'm all in. That's it. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You can tweet at me. Text the program as well. Love hearing from me. Oh, and Elizabeth Warren was also trending because she endorsed Joe Biden. That's not a shocker. I don't think we expected anything less. Do you? Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. You're talking months 
of reentry. You're talking of phased reentry. There is no clear benchmark that you can set. Obviously, everybody wants to do it tomorrow, ASAP, but you have to calibrate it by watching the spread of the virus. So start opening the valve of people coming back out and economic activity. But while you're opening the valve, watch the numbers every day of the spread of the virus. You know, one thing I can't get an answer from from any of our leaders is you know there's going to be a spike in the number of people that will test positive for the coronavirus again once we open up the valve as governor cuomo said there and we allow people to start getting back out there and doing their thing what happens we we can't go on like this forever. We're going to have to get back out there. We're going to, and we understand for some states, it's definitely going to be a very long and slow process. But recognize that this is going to have a situation where we're going to have another spike in the coronavirus, and we can't have a stop start. That can't be something we do. We can't. I can see uh, that we can start coming back to what is perceived to be at least some semblance of normalcy, meaning be able to go to a restaurant, be able to go to a gathering. But we have to practice uh, that physical distancing nonetheless. Okay, I get that. Some normalcy and you're going to have how palatable is it going to be to go to a restaurant and to see the person serving you may be wearing a mask and gloves. <laughs> that's that that feels very off putting. I have I have to be I have to be real with you. Even now when I see people in a mask, it's like you know it, it feels off putting. We're talking about uh, having uh, uh, a fever check before you walk in, uh, wearing face coverings, having a waiter uh, with gloves and potentially disposable uh, menus. Just. I don't know. I there's there's just some things we're not going to land back in a world of 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 normal see and until we can start to have interactions that I think are free of some of these things in people's minds, even though you may be able to do certain things still, there's still going to be automatically some social distancing, which I think is going to cause consumers to have a much different way that they look at things and you've got to be be honest with people and that's what i i want to hear our our government do when it comes to us getting out there and doing things at some point in time we're going to have to say all right here's the deal this is how we're going to do it we're going to step forward and we're going to go like this we've tried it one way but we realized While it mitigated some of the damage that could have been done earlier, we also are destroying the economy. And at some point in time, we're going to have to say it's all hands on deck. The people that can afford to get out there and get to work and are willing to take the the risk and live their lives, this is what you need to do. Everybody else, while we look for a vaccine and a treatment, you're going to have to be in a situation where you isolate yourself, knowing full well if you do go out there, there is a certain risk that you're taking upon yourself because... Trump is right about some things when it comes to this and the cure being worse than the disease. I think people are willing to 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 if we were all like New York, I'd be like, oh, wow, this is but we're not. And. Even Cuomo recognizes that. If this goes on for a prolonged period of time, it's going to bankrupt the state. And we're going to have so many people unemployed that digging out of it will take us a decade. How do you balance that? Well, there's a personal responsibility side of things. And that personal responsibility is you kind of know what the risk is going into this. Whatever that risk may be to a healthy person, it's very minimal to somebody who's not healthy. It's a lot. We're already seeing spending change in ways that we cannot believe 
The government this morning reporting March retail sales plunging a record 8.7 percent amid the coronavirus pandemic. That's the biggest decline in Commerce Department records dating back to 1992. The effects of social distancing measures even more pronounced in retail segments such as clothing stores, where revenue was down more than 50 percent. Restaurants and bars seeing a drop of more than 26 percent. But sales at food and beverage stores up more than 25 percent as shoppers stocked up on essential items. Yeah, like booze. Wait till we see what that looks like next month with all of these things in place nationwide. Online shopping, rocking and rolling. Digging into this Piper survey and found out how consumer behavior has been changing while people have been under lockdown working from home. 53% of consumers are actually spending less now than they were in mid-March. And 50% of consumers have actually increased their online shopping. When it comes to working from home, like while some might miss the office, miss their colleagues, miss the commute, there's actually 52% who consider working from home more often. Yeah, and I think that'll help. I think we're going to have some, not only is our consumer way that we do things changing, but also the way that we're going to be living our life in the future is going to change as well. And that's a good thing. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's going to come out of us that's good. This is not all negative. When it comes to exercising, 82% of responders who are exercising more or the same amount than they were prior to the coronavirus, but they're not doing home improvement. In fact, you've got many respondents that are saying they're less likely to do home improvement over the next month, even though they are at home and would have more time for that. Yeah, no, but that feels like a job. <laughs> Exercise feels like, oh, I can work on myself. Feels fun. But these are the things that are going to hurt, especially when you look around and see that that small business makes up a good majority of America and how we go and restaurants who already have it tough. It's a tough thing. Getting a, opening up a restaurant and keeping it open is already tough enough. But then you throw this into it. A bit of good news for the restaurant industry also in this survey. 60% of restaurants said that as soon as restaurants are open, they are going to go. But 62% will remain concerned about social distancing and entering a crowded restaurant. And that's that psychological aspect I talk about, that there's a certain amount of people that even when we reopen are going to be hesitant to go out and participate in things. And they're also going to be very hesitant in going to places like restaurants to sit down and eat because now in their mind, everything is a potential death trap. There was another new study out there of how Americans plan to use the stimulus check from the government up to $1,200. Nearly 30% of Americans would actually use their stimulus check as soon as they get it to pay down their rent or their mortgage. So basically, concern is really for the basics, putting or keeping a roof over their head at this point. And the longer this goes, the more that's going to become an issue. And that issue is going to grow steadily. If this goes on for several more weeks, you're going to find that you're going to see a lot of people that are going to be filing for bankruptcy. People that are now lining up for food that in their wildest mind, in their craziness of everything went wrong, would never have thought they'd be in the situation they're in today. And having even with the money they're getting from the government, they're struggling. And they're going to fall behind and they're going to start digging, you know, as the hole as they're digging, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Those are the which is a lot of people who I think are willing to say, look, I got to get back to work. The problem is, how do you get back to work if half the country is not going to be able to afford to go out and do certain things? The survey also looked at other ways people plan on spending that stimulus money and found that almost half will use it to buy groceries and pay bills like utilities. 42% will use it to put it into their savings and close to 27% will use that money to pay down credit card debt. But millennials, more so than other generations, more so than Gen X and baby boomers, are planning to use that check to actually pay down their housing costs. And if you live in certain parts of the country, that 1200 bucks, I mean, what's that do for you? If you're in San Francisco and you've been furloughed and you're st- you know, you're getting maybe $1000 a week from the government and and you're getting your 1200 bucks, but it's 3500 for your apartment 
and you got a car payment and you're starting to now you're making serious choices about what do I pay and what don't I pay. And the governors are looking around and saying, what is the best way to reopen? But reopening, it's also a science as well. Because you're also going to have to have the people that have the money to go out and do certain things. So if you you reopen today and nobody has any money, does it matter that you're open? And all these people, I think a lot of people also have this 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 belief and it's false that we have furloughed everybody but if we're reopen next week we're going to bring everybody back that's not going to happen either because they're recognizing that hey we can do more with less which is very much a business thing and the other thing is is why are we going to need everybody to come back if people aren't going to be spending the same way they were before so having 10 people on the floor of somewhere when only half is needed means that half those people that were employed probably won't have a shot at getting their job back, at least not for a while. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Car shield saves you money. I'll tell you how this is you without car shield. Your car breaks down. You take it in. You're like, Hey, my GPS, super touchscreen sensor thing's gone out. How much is it? And they're like, oh, it's $1,000 for each sensor. Da 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 da. I got to pull it out. It's going to be $2,300. You're like, no! You with Car Shield. Yeah, just get it fixed. I just have to pay my deductible. You guys are getting them paid. Fantastic. Car Shield's awesome. 24 7 roadside assistance. A rental car for free while your car's in the shop. Shops that you choose. You can take it to the dealership. They get them paid directly. You pay. A small deductible. The thing I love about Car Shield is, is they've got the plan that's right for you. Maybe you're worried about your transmission. Your car's a little bit older. You don't have all those electronics. Or maybe you're worried about the electronics. Your car's a little bit newer. Car Shield has a plan for you. Starting at $99 a month. They've got over a million customers, and they're ready for you. Protect yourself from the surprises in the world of automobile and save yourself big time with Car Shield. Call 800 Car 6000. Mention code Benson when you do. You save 10% right there. Tell them exactly what you're looking for. 800 car 6000. Code Benson saves you 10% or carshield.com. Carshield.com. Code Benson saves you 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. need to fear. We promise we won't give you a noogie and make you cry Russia, Russia, Russia. Who is the fearless leader? Fui. Fui, fui, and double fui. Fui is your language. It is a family show, remember? Fui to family too. Nostrovia. This is Chad Benson. He grew up on the ragged edge of the middle class in Scranton. He committed to public service early in life and never stopped serving. And he's faced unspeakable tragedy with fortitude and grace. I speak her native tongue, and that is Elizabeth Warren endorsing Joe Biden. Just in case you guys don't understand that, don't worry, I got you covered. <laughs> Such a jerk, Chad. 323 538 2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. So let's go over this for just a second, shall we? Bernie. Two days ago, yesterday, Obama, and now Elizabeth Warren. Still no word on Killary. But it looks pretty good for Joe as far as endorsements go. His biggest thing in the next couple weeks or so is narrowing down who's going to be his running mate. So we'll see who that's going to be. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter? You can tweet at us. Major League Baseball, I think, may be the first one to return. It's going to be between that and basketball. I still think football will return in some way. I don't know what the stadiums or stands are going to look like, uh, if there's going to be anybody in any of those or any of these. 
But Major League Baseball is doing something when it comes to antibodies. Major League Baseball is going to be participating in a study that's going to include 10,000 antibody tests. Now, there's a difference between the antibody tests and the tests that are done looking for the novel coronavirus live in patients who are sick in medical personnel. Yeah, so these are antibody tests. Not the coronavirus test, meaning testing for the person who's got the coronavirus. Rather, have you had the coronavirus, meaning you have antibodies. Antibody testing tries to find out after the fact whether people had coronavirus and maybe were asymptomatic. And when you have 10,000 tests going out across the country to organizations that are giving them out to their employees, this includes players, concession workers, a wide range of people, this is going to be the biggest such study in the United States. Which is awesome, because I think one of the things that baseball comes... First of all, let me tell you from a business standpoint, Major League Baseball having the opportunity to come back and be first gives them something that other sports aren't going to have, which is them being out there. Football's still a ways off. If you can get back and playing baseball, and Arizona bust is kind of what they're going with. We we talked to uh, uh, Governor Ducey yesterday in Arizona, and he said he had talked to Rob Manfred, who's the commissioner of baseball, about all 30 teams playing out here, what the logistics would be, how it could energize the economy. So that'll be really interesting. He says, I don't know whether or not there's going to be fans there. And the thought process that they've banded around is it could be for the whole season. Some teams may be here for the whole seasons, but eventually several of the clubs may return back to their ballparks over a period of time. And that would be interesting. And the antibody would be something else so let's just say you've taken the antibody test and it shows that you've had the coronavirus that you have no longer have it that you're asymptomatic and that now that you have had it and you've beat it you're probably immune to it for a period of time probably no less than a year but in some of these things you're you may never get it again does that mean you get to go do stuff he says having the immunity is almost like having a magic pass because you're going to be able to do more than other people and that includes getting back out there and working in what capacity i don't know because if you have a job where they've closed everything down it's not like they're just going to let you go work there but could it mean that you could go to sporting events if you show hey look i've had my immunity and i want to go in and watch a sporting event but it would be nice if you're baseball you got to think to yourself man you get out there this could be really cool and if i'm baseball this might be the year i try all kinds of stuff like, I've seen players say, you know what, rather than extra innings, let's do a, you know, you choose your best batter, we choose our best batter, and we'll have a home run hitting contest, and, and we'll go from there, and, and you know, we'll expand the, the rosters and play double headers. maybe you play seven innings. I mean, just try some things, because you're going to have potentially the entire summer to yourself, especially if basketball gets back, because I don't think the NHL's coming back at all. So... You'll have a run at this for a while, so might as well try some stuff this year. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. We're getting you over the hump because that's what we do, kids. Coronavirus or not, Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. During the month of April, we'll account for 10 million meals being provided to New Yorkers who need them. All for free. That's Mayor de Blasio right there, who I think is a boob most of the time. But think about this for a second. 10 million meals provided. You see across the country... How things can turn on a dime. Six weeks ago, we were all going about their life. We had heard about some of this stuff. We had seen some of the issues in places like Italy and Spain and what took place in Wuhan. But the reality is, is we were relatively unscathed. The few 
few places here that had one or two issues, but we didn't give much thought. You jump forward six weeks. We're in a pandemic. The country, for uh, from the most part, 95% of it is completely shut down, minus essential workers, social distancing is in place. And some people who six weeks ago had a small business, seemed to be doing okay, are now on the brink of financial collapse, haven't done anything really wrong with their life, and they're having to turn to the government to get fed. Crazy. But we're going to get through this. It sucks, but we're going to get through it. And we have to remember, we're already on the ride, okay? You ever get on a roller coaster, strap in, get yourself ready to roll, you look around, you're not quite sure you want to do it, and then all of a sudden they tell everybody, put your hands up, make sure the guy walks over and he pulls on it to make sure you're strapped in nice and tightly, and then the, you know, they look over, they give the thumbs up, the person in there hits the little button, it goes, tss, and then you start taking off, and you're already on the ride. And we're going up to that point where we're getting ready to go up that first big hump, which is going to shoot us down, and it's going to send us on a chaotic ride but we're going to get to the other side. There's no turning back at this point. And we have to remember that we've started this process and we're going to get through this process and we're going to do it together and it's going to suck. And at times it's going to be uncomfortable and you're going to feel like the, your stomach, the the pit of your stomach. Oh, but we're going to get through it. We are. And there's a lot of negativity. It's easy to be negative when you're hearing about 10 million meals and people waiting hours and hours in line to get food and, you know, 16 and a half million people unemployed in the space of three weeks. And we're on our way to a Great Depression, not even a Great Recession. And we're going to get through it. And that's the one thing that we can all take solace in, that we know that the person next door is going through something as well. As the person on the other side, it's not just you. And we can't isolate ourselves to the point where we think it's only us going through it. Everybody's going through it. Everybody is. And it sucks. But we'll get through it. How do we do it in a positive way? What can we do to make changes, albeit little or big, that will help us in the future? And we've got to start looking at that. Because it's so easy to get bogged down by the BS and the negativity that, you know, you watch television. And, and I, I have a tough time watching it, a lot of this stuff. And the reason is, is because it's built to evoke an emotion out of you. It's not built to give you the true hard data and facts. Because that's tough to come by. That really is tough to come by. Because we can look at this and we're like, oh, my God, there's always a coronavirus pandemic number in the case. And it's like one of those tote boards that you see and, you know, one of those fundraising drives on TV. And it's click, 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 click. No. We'll get through this thing. It's going to happen. We're going to get through it together. And we got to keep our heads up. And again, everybody out there will have a down day. Everybody out there is going to have a day where you think this is, you know, you start planning. I got to move back in with my parents and, 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 you know, but when is that going to happen? I'm not going to No, we're going to get through it. It's going to suck at times, but knowing that eventually we're going to get through it and it's going to happen sooner than we think things aren't going to return to normal tomorrow. They're not going to return to normal in six weeks, but we will get to some form of normality in the space of the next probably eight weeks to three months. And by the end of this year, I think most of the country will be back doing things that we were doing before, enjoying the things that we were enjoying before. At what level, I don't know, but it is coming. It is. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. And speaking of getting back to normal what everybody wants to know like that's the big thing when is this normal world coming back it will happen trump is trying to push it as fast as possible you can't rush something like this this is just something you can't rush and you being the president you can only do so much because the beauty of our 10th amendment is things that don't fall under the federal government fall to the states and it's opening up the states and closing the states you've allowed them to do that themselves in the closing of the states and now they're running it you got to allow them to do the opening of the states 
And he's talked about the fact that, hey, you know what? I'm going to do that. They know when it's time to open. And we don't want to put pressure on anybody. I'm not going to put any pressure on any governor to open. I'm not going to say to Governor Cuomo, you got to open within seven days. I want him to take his time, do it right, and then open New York. I'm not putting any pressure on the governors. And that's good. Governors will know what's best for their states. And their states will open up accordingly. There are some states right now, seven of them, Nebraska, Iowa, the Dakotas, Arkansas, Utah, that don't really, Wyoming, they they, they don't have a lot of issues. So they really haven't done what states like New York and California have, which is closed down, practicing extreme social and physical distancing. Where here in Arizona, while we practice social distancing, it's not extreme. You can wear a mask. You cannot wear a mask. You can't. There, there's just it, when I go and, and pick Jack up about a month ago. It's been with me almost that long. You notice the difference when you get into California, how much different it is than, than Arizona. And that's changed even since then. His mom says to me yesterday, I miss him, but I wouldn't even know what he would want to do here. There's nothing you can do. Everything's closed. Can't go anywhere. Here, he's got the run of the place. And we still are practicing social distancing. It is frustrating. We're going to get there. And the governors will know what's best. New York is going to come out of this, but it's going to take a lot longer. Nebraska, Arkansas, Utah. Arizona, California, Oregon, Washington, they're going to open up in due time in the way that they want to do it. And some it's going to be a trickle. Some it's going to be more of a turning the faucet on high and kind of letting it go. But it's going to happen. And I think we have to be aware of that. Because right now, like everything, when you're in the midst of it, you can't see anything else but it. And we have to be reminded that there are other things. And then that's a good thing, that we can remind ourselves of that. Even yesterday, my little sister's expecting uh, her first child. And she's had to cancel her baby shower. She's had to, I mean, there's so many things that she was looking forward to that she's just not going to be able to do. And she doesn't even think uh, my brother-in-law is going to be able to be inside of the room with her and it's just like these are things that are life-changing events that are taking place but you know what it's a moment in time and it's a moment that we'll always remember and we'll be stronger for it at the end and if we can start remembering some of those things that we're all in this together normally when you hear we're all in this together something happens on a regional basis and you're in a place where you're not really touched by it it's an easy thing to say well guess what we're all in it and by all i mean everybody across the globe Minus two or three small little places on Earth, everybody across the globe is feeling this. So we are truly all in this together. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. You can text the program as well. Raycons, the best earbuds around. Jack has taken my Raycons so, so he can watch the YouTube. He likes the YouTube. Seamless, too. And what I love about it is I don't have to always go and turn it on for him. He knows how to do it. Kids do that. And, but I don't have to then hear all of the crazy YouTube people that he follows. And that's okay with me. Raycons are great. Earbuds. Right now you're looking around and you're saying to yourself, you know, I do need better earbuds. I need better because i got to take these phone calls. The kids are here. I just want to be able to block out the noise. And sometimes I just want to relax and listen to something and not have to. These are what Raycons are for. E25's best ones yet. Stylish, simple. Put them in your ears. You barely know they're there. So comfortable. The design is awesome. And that noise isolating fit, so amazing. So when you're taking calls, making calls on a conference call or zooming in, it's you, you just it's awesome. Less than a hundred bucks. And right now, you're gonna save fifteen percent on top of that. Go to buyraycon.com slash chad buyraycon.com slash chad buyraycon.com slash chad you will not be disappointed in these chad benson show
take a fake news break. Check, 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 check out the really important news of the day at our website, chadbensonshow.com. Once there, click on Chad's free podcast and get real. The Chad Benson Show, where truth and the American way live. Print free. We can't afford to let Donald Trump continue to endanger the lives and livelihoods of every American. And that's why I'm proud to endorse Joe Biden as president of the United States. If you guys don't recognize her native tongue, I'm a wind talker. And that is Elizabeth Warren endorsing Joe Biden. So he's got the trifecta. Bernie. Obama. And now Elizabeth. That's the trifecta. Does it help him? I don't know if any endorsement. I mean, like, who else are they going to endorse? <laughs> like, really? Who else are they going to endorse? I know with Bernie, he stood back and he waited an extra long time after the Hillary thing. And there was a reason for that. Because they screwed him. But who else are they going to... If they dislike the guy in the White House this much... then it should be a no-brainer. Did you see? Did you see? She endo- Really? She endorsed him? She endorsed him? You mean nobody else was running for president? They can't stand the guy in the White House and they're from the same party and she endorsed him? This is my shocked face. <laughs> Idiots. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. This I found funny. Fredo Cuomo talking about his job on a podcast or a serious interview. But change is coming. I don't want to spend my time doing things that I don't think are valuable enough to me personally. I don't like what I do professionally, I've decided. I don't value indulging irrationality, hyperpartisanship. I don't think it's worth my time anymore. Because I don't want to spend my time trafficking in things that I think are ridiculous. Remember, he doesn't like Trump that much. It feels like he, he's got to go extra dislike for Trump. I, I find that to be funny. He's not done. I don't want to spend my time on television talking to Democrats about things that I don't really believe they mean. And I don't want to spend my time talking to Republicans about them parroting things that they feel they have to say. And analyzing a president who we all know is full of shit most of the time by design. Yeah. You kind of walk back some of that, but I think a lot of that's true. I think he knows he's got to play a certain part of a game. Everybody assumes that, well, you're on radio, so you got to be ultra conservative. I'm like, I'm anything but ultra conservative. I'm just me. I approach every single subject and issue as an individual, and I look at it based on its merits and the data and the truth, and I go from there. I have friends who are in this business who I know don't believe a lot of the stuff they talk about and the way that they talk about it. And they put a little extra mustard on stuff because they feel that's what the audience wants. I can't do that. I can't. It's uh, it's just it's that's not who I am. I'm genuine. I mean, people ask me, what do you like off the radio? Well, minus the microphone in front of me, I'm kind of the same, except usually I've got more lizards around. I think he's. I think a lot of that is, is is real, and I think he's taking stock after going through this thing. But like, even when he was talking about, remember, you know, when he was talking about how he's having these weird dreams, these out of body like weird experiences, and he chipped his tooth because I felt like God, he's put mustard on those things, you know, meaning he's he's putting a little extra on it. He doesn't have to because it makes for good television, and that's the bleed it leads thing. I think while we're going to look back at this time. And say, wow, that was a crazy time as we get through this. I think we're going to look back and we're going to question how Trump handled it. We're going to question some of the things that are going on in in the government and the overreach of stuff. Uh, And there's plenty of that that I haven't had time to get to that I want to touch on. But I think we're also going to look back at the media and say, how did you portray this? 
It's the only thing that's happening. You portrayed it as if anybody who catches it is going to die, and it's just a matter of days. I think everybody's got a part to play, and everybody's going to have to ask themselves. You know, I had a friend here uh, who about a month and a half, two months ago, uh, they made a change at the, 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 you know, so I do my national show, and then I do a local show as well, and they made a change and brought in somebody new, and the two people that they, they moved out, one of them, they offered her an opportunity to stay, and she said, no, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't like this job anymore. It's, it's, it's too negative, and I, I don't – she made a personal choice because she felt that it really wasn't her and that, that, that everything they had to talk about was dour and depressing and, and sensationalized, and that's, that's real. I think a lot of people feel that way. That's why I can't be down all the time. I mean, I can give you the data and the facts, but I always try to look on the brighter side of things. But I think Fredo Cuomo, Chris Cuomo there, I think I think some of that is, even though he's walked some of that back and I know he signed a new contract, I think the way that he's having to handle things and, and, and being told how to handle stuff, I think it makes him uncomfortable. I do. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson really about the who, what, where, when, why, how. We, we hope to learn who develops antibodies, whether people who have mild or no symptoms at all um, can develop antibodies, when they're developed, how long they last, how powerful they are. All of that is going to be critically important information to help us fight this virus moving forward. Yeah, and the antibodies, it's very interesting, some of the stuff that they're trying to do with the antibodies and the testing and whether or not that will or won't work as far as even taking some plasma from there. How long does your immunity last? That's another question that people are asking. Our working assumption is that uh, individuals who develop antibody will have protective immunity. The question is how long. That's uh, Redfield, head of the CDC. Before that was Dr. Jen Ashton talking about testing the antibodies and they're also looking at some of the treatments that maybe they can use from former patients who've survived this and taking the plasma and using that on patients that are sick an experimental plasma treatment allowing patients who've had the virus and recovered to donate their blood it's now being fast-tracked by the fda randy spires is in critical condition his daughter is begging for someone to donate plasma to save him. I hate to say it's our last hope, but it is our next hope. There are indications the treatment may work. Yeah, absolutely. Getting closer and closer as they look at some of these things. And this is the thing that's important right now. The vaccine is a year to 18 months away. In reality. I mean, could something happen sooner? Yes. But in reality, with testing and all of this stuff, it's probably, you know, they're, they're saying 18 months. I'm very much glass half full. I think the way that we're going, we could come up with something sooner. But look out at least 12 to 18 months before we get a vaccine. So a treatment is important because a treatment allows us to treat this like the flu, to get on with our everyday life, to know that if you did get it, you're probably you're going to get nowhere near a hospital that you could go see your doctor. Your doctor could say, hey, here, this is what we need to do. You're probably going to fight it off anyways because the majority of people that get it, especially if you're in decent health, you're not obese, which they're showing more and more. The obesity side of things is a major player in this, as well as other underlying health conditions. So... You'll probably never get there. But if you do get to the point where you're sick and we have a treatment for it, this is what the treatment may be. And who knows what that is? This plasma treatment looks interesting. 
There are indications the treatment may work. Jimmy Hayden's wife dropped him off at the hospital on April 2nd. By 7 o'clock that night, he was on a ventilator. Did not expect that at all. He's been intubated since then. Last Thursday, he got the plasma treatment, and on Monday, he was able to give his wife Ashley that thumbs up. His doctors now say he might be taken off the ventilator. And that's good. Those things are good. Little things like that, because they're trying them. They're trying different ways to combat, especially people who would you would normally say, that person's healthy. That person over there, 25 years old, what's going on? Uh, well, a lot of times what's happening with the, the body, what do they call it, uh, cytotine, where your body starts producing so many white blood cells that it starts fighting itself which causes swelling. So some doctors are saying, you know what? When this starts to happen, we need to reduce the inflammation rather than try to treat it in certain ways. And if we reduce the inflammation, we may never get anywhere near needing a ventilator or even needing the hospital. So they're they're coming at it with several different things. It's probably not going to be one fix. But if we get a treatment, that will allow us to feel more comfortable in returning back to a day-to-day life that we once knew In saying all that, there's a lot of people out there that are fine with the risk. They're fine with the the risk of going out there and doing the things that they need to do to earn a living and to live a normal life. And I get that 110%. I am, look, we take a risk every day. You hear it all the time, but you drive the work, you're taking a risk. I think it was a USC professor who did a study that says if you're below like 40 or or 50 and and you're in good health, the the risk of you dying from the coronavirus is no different than you taking a nine-mile drive every morning to and from work. And you're like, oh, I never even thought of it like that. But now we're hearing all kinds of things when it comes to this, and we want to get back to normal. And we don't really even remember what normal is for some people especially now that we've so altered our behavior and the way that we interact with each other, especially with social distancing, and now you're talking about when we might get back to normal as far as social distancing? Some sort of social distancing measures may be needed into 2022. That from a new study in the journal Science, Harvard researchers warning that their projections indicate there would be a large resurgence of coronavirus infections if social distancing measures are lifted all at once, potentially delaying the epidemic's peak and exacerbating the load on critical care resources. The study's authors writing, intermittent distancing may be required into 2022 unless critical care capacities increase substantially or treatment or vaccine becomes available. And that's tough. I mean, that takes a toll on you. We are a, uh, a species that likes to be around one another. We are a species that likes to to interact with each other. We are a species that run in packs and having to shrink your 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 circle of friends and be distant in such a way is it's it's kind of very weird. It's not just kind of, it's very very weird. In fact, there are people out there who yeah, everybody's got a hugger, right? You hug, you hug. There's, there's always that person that hugs. And in this day and age with, you know, the Me Too, we're always scared about that. But the reality, we all have family members to do this. We all have, I've got a couple friends that are big huggers. And you know what? I'm cool with that because we are a species that like that. We need the interaction. We run packs. That's what we do, by and large. There are some people out there with exceptions. Uh, And people are struggling with this. Yonkers resident Lori Garbin hasn't hugged her mom since the first weekend in March. The last time she was able to visit 90-year-old Mary Kirby before her Riverdale nursing home went into coronavirus lockdown. Had I known, I would have given her a much, much, much bigger hug before I left. She is a hugger. It's a way of saying for me that you mean something to me, that you matter to me. Yeah, and it's weird. Even shaking hands or giving your buddy dap or or what, it's just 
odd. So yesterday when the the governor comes in and he he is entourage is shrunk, by the way. So Governor Ducey comes in here to our studios to do to to do an interview. We do a monthly here on my local show here. So and normally, you know, we shake hands and with all of those people and instead it was just very sterile. And that's the way it is. You go places, it's very sterile. We're 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 not smiling, we've got our heads down, it's almost a zombie like feel. And we're losing a bit of that closeness within ourselves. And that's not a good thing because we human touch and interaction is vitally important. Many of you will understand the pain she feels at not being able to hug her mom. A connection, a love, um, her smell. Researchers say there is power in human touch and hugs can heal. Endocrinologist Dr. David Freiberg wrote about it for Psychology Today. People need to be hugged. We need to be touched. Hugs affecting uh, viral infectivity, affecting mood, affecting response to stress. But because this thing is so contagious, we've really gone the other way, shaking hands and, and hugging. And it, it's 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 crazy. But he's right about that as far as the the the, the hugging and the touching. And they did a great study in the in, in Russia that these kids that are in orphanages, they have no real interaction with human beings. Outside of getting picked up, getting their diaper changed, there's no closeness, there's no touching, there's no hugging, and they they lose that human experience, and it's very weird in how you go and you watch these kids as they've studied these kids as they become adults and how they're, because they've had no human interaction like that, where they've essentially felt no love, that They've gone off and become dangerous, and they become violent. They've become withdrawn. It's important. It is important. And when it just ends overnight, that's weird. You don't realize how much you miss it until you can't get it anymore. This too shall pass, and someday we'll hug again. I hope so. In the meantime, virtual hug. Mm -hmm. The emoji is sweet, but no substitute for the real thing. Yeah. And and how much is that going to be true? Some people go back to hugging, but for some people, I don't think they will, at least for a while. They're going to push off. I think even if stuff was lifted tomorrow, you're still going to have a certain amount of society that views everything now, whether it's human interaction, a touch or a high five or a handshake, or even opening a door somewhere, because who touched that before? as something that's going to be very off-putting for a while. And it only took a few weeks, and, you know, I mean, now people see germs everywhere. Now people see danger everywhere. And a hug now will be dangerous for some. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me and text the program as well. Love hearing from every single one of you. Ah, Let's talk about your car. All right, so you got your car. It's right there. And you're saying to yourself, self, what should I do with my car? I don't have a warranty, but I do like my car. And if something was to go wrong, I don't really want to pay a ton to get it fixed. Well, that's why you have Car Shield. Car Shield gives you 24 7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop. And the shop is the shop that you choose. And they've got all kinds of plans. So you call them up and you say, hey, you know what? My car's a little newer, I'm more worried about the sensors. And all the electronics, they got a plan for that. Maybe you call them up and say, eh, my car's a little bit older. It's like 18 years old, and it's got, you know, 100,000 miles or so on it, and I'm worried about the engine and the transmission. So they got a plan for that. Whatever thing that you're worried about with your car, they've got a plan to protect you. Well over a million customers and counting. And guess what? 24-7 roadside assistance, rental car for free while your car's in the shop, and the shop's the shop that you choose. They get them paid directly. That's a win. That's why they have so many. Get your car shield today. Call 800-CAR-6000. Mention code Benson. Saves you 10%. Again, for as low as $99 a month, you can protect yourself from surprises and save 1000 800-CAR-6000. Code Benson saves you 10% or carshield.com. Carshield.com. Code Benson saves you 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. I'm so tired. 
If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. Wake up. It's the Chad Benson Show. Are you ready for it? This Saturday's star-studded global broadcast, One World Together at Home, just got a whole lot more star-studded. Taylor Swift has joined the lineup along with Celine Dion, Shawn Mendes, Camila Cabello, Sam Smith, Usher, Jennifer Lopez, Alicia Keys, and Pharrell Williams. And the list of non-musician celebs also growing, Oprah, Ellen DeGeneres, Matthew McConaughey, and more. One World Together at Home will air across all major TV networks, cable channels, and streaming platforms starting at 8 p.m. Eastern with hosts Jimmy Kimmel, Stephen Colbert, and Jimmy Fallon. It'll be interesting to watch how they do these things because I know, was it two weeks ago they did the uh, Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood thing? Is that how they're going to do this, where they're kind of in their own place and studio and and not having people around? There is something kind of weird about it, you know? It is, uh, it's still, it is kind of odd, especially when you're doing music, but... Hey, raising money, doing things, that's a good thing. Nothing wrong with that. We need to do more of that, especially help out our fellow man and woman. And I guess you would say somebody who's non-gender specific, so what's not to hurt anybody? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us, the airline industry, getting a little bit of a bailout, and there's a reason for that because they're struggling. One day after the country's biggest airlines announced plans to accept federal bailout money, the TSA is announcing today that on Tuesday, fewer than 90,000 passengers were screened in the U.S. That's the lowest number yet during the COVID-19 outbreak and the lowest since the days following 9-11. On the same day last year, over 2.2 million passengers were screened at security checkpoint. That's insane so think about that for a second just for uh, uh, just just take that into your mind 2.2 million down to about 90,000 nuts like a 95 percent drop and one of the things i think that's going to come out of all this coronavirus craziness and the is how much business travel are people going to be doing not leisure travel. I think that will eventually come back. But I think with the way that people are doing things now online, being able to conduct and do certain things, that you're going to be able to do a lot more business travel via the Internet and conferencing, especially if you're getting stuff done. Now, it's not going to replace being there in certain specific going to conferences and things like that. But on an everyday thing where people are traveling a lot, I think you'll see that cut down, and I wonder how much business travel goes on, because I know I travel quite a bit, and I'm usually in hotels. I haven't stayed in a hotel in, God, six, eight weeks. I think I stayed once last week or the week before, but that's sort of my normal being out doing stuff and for traveling, and it's I haven't done a lot of that lately, and I'm okay with it, although I'm not thrilled about the, because I have a long drive, but the good news is with nobody on the road, it's not awful. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us, Lightstream. So many of you out there looking for ways to save yourself some money. Lightstream's here to help. Lightstream credit cards, consolidation loans have rates from just 5.95% APR with auto pay, and there's absolutely no fees. You can quickly roll balances from multiple credit cards into one single monthly payment. So think about that. You're paying 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 percent. You got pretty decent credit. Save yourself some money. Roll those balances over with Lightstream. So many of my listeners are doing it. They're loving it. One listener said, shared about Lightstream on my show. They made the entire process easy, stress-free, and really helped them consolidate their debts. You can do it, too. And just for applying today, you get a special interest rate discount, and you're going to save even more. Now, the only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash Benson. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-M dot com slash Benson. Subject to credit approval rate includes 0.50% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. Offer subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash Benson for more information. We got you over the hump. Got to keep our heads up, people. I know it sucks. It does. And I'm telling you guys, if you can, get out. Go for a walk, go outside, take a walk somewhere, jog around the block, do something where you're in some sort of sunshine, fresh air, even if it's cloudy, 
Do something to get your heart rate up because it gives you a good perspective on things, gets those endorphins going. We're going to get through this. The ride has already started. It's a little scary at times. We can hold on, but we will get through this together. Have a great rest of your hump day Wednesday. We will do it again tomorrow as always. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.